Changing the background without a green screen in most cases is quite a fiddly and a cumbersome process where you usually have to mask your subjects frame by frame, literally taking ages to get the desired result. Even if you have a green screen, it's not really an easy process by any means. But using these two methods, you should be able to remove the background from any video in DaVinci Resolve in just a few minutes, literally saving you hours and hours of manual work. So let's dive right in. Now, the first method is the easier one, but it would only work if you have a video where the subject and the background are clearly separated and there's not a lot of distracting elements in between. The effect is called depth map and how this works is that the object which is closer to the camera will be highlighted and the background will be keyed out or the opposite of what I just said. And that's pretty much it basically. It's very, very simple. No keyframing or tracking is needed. So in order to use this, you can search for the depth map effect on the effects menu and drag it onto the clip and let it do its thing. By the way, all of this can be done in the edit tab itself. So you wouldn't really need to mess with the fusion tab. You can also enable the gray overlay mask so that you can see the edges clearly. Usually it stays on by default, but in some cases you might have to turn it on manually. Also, depending on your hardware, you might want to check the quality settings. If you have a good GPU, then you can enable the better quality, which handles the edges quite a bit better. Otherwise, you can just stick to the faster quality. There are a few settings which you can play around with, like the map levels where you can set the near and the uh, far limits. This usually helps you to refine your selection in case you want to key out anything else, which is not in the same 3D space as your main subject. You can also change the smoothness if you don't like the weird smoothening of the edges and you can make small adjustments like blurring the edges or shifting them inwards or outwards. And then you can literally bring anything in the background by pulling in a layer under your current subject layer. You might want to turn on the fusion cache so that it can play smoothly after a few passes. Now, a bonus tip, you can also use the depth map while color grading and I have been using it for quite a while now. All you need to do is go to the color grading tab and enable the node editor, search for the depth map in the effects panel and drag it onto the node editor individually. Now normally you would drag and drop an effect onto a clip directly but in this case it has to be independent. Now we can connect our clip node along with its alpha to the depth map node and then we can create another serial node after the depth map node and this is the node where we can make all the changes to the background of our clip. You can make it darker, you can make it lighter or maybe change the colors, the possibilities are endless. So it's pretty easy and straightforward, right? On to the next one. Alright, now this method works pretty well for most subjects and is pretty much like the Roto Brush tool in After Effects. It's called the Magic Mask. Using this, you can pretty easily mask and track a complicated subject which would otherwise take you more than an hour. So in order to use this effect, we'll have to switch over to the color grading window and head over to the magic mask tab. Now before we start masking our subject, there are a few things we have to ensure. First, if you can't see the magic cursor and nothing happens when you click on the video, then you might want to check if the qualifier cursor is turned on or not. Second, if your subject is a person, then you'll have to select the person option. If you have an object, then of course, the object option. Now you would also want to turn on the mask overlay by clicking on the toggle mask overlay option. Now what this does is that it shows you a faint overlay on top of your subject so that you can easily see whether the selection is correct or not. Alright, now we can start with the masking by drawing over our subject but avoiding drawing over the background at the same time. And it should detect and mask our subject quite easily. If your subject is a person and is not bald, then you might have some issues while masking out the hair. In which case, you'll have to change the quality to better. Although you might want to know that increasing the quality will use more CPU and GPU power. Okay, so after the masking is done, we'll have to track it. If you have masked your subject somewhere in the middle just like I did, then you can simply click on this button here and it will track both forwards and backwards in the same run. And once it's done, we can play the clip and check whether everything is fine and masked correctly. Now you should be able to notice that the background isn't gone. And for that, we'll have to go back to the nodes panel and right click on an empty space and select add alpha output, which will add a small blue dot along with the output green dot thing. I don't really know what it's called. Then we can connect the alpha of the clip node to the alpha output and the mask part of the video will be keyed out. In our case, the subject got keyed out, but that can be easily fixed by selecting the invert mask in the magic mask tab. 
So there we have it. Now we can add any kind of background behind our subjects even without using a green screen. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful in some way and if you have any kind of suggestions do leave them down in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.